بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم امير المؤمنين امام المتقين امام علي عليه الصلاه والسلام he says wala yashmatu bil masaib very very important quality of the muttaqin simply put this means that when he hears or when he sees of others misfortunes someone went through something difficult someone went through something bad in their life he doesn't rejoice he doesn't feel happy this is now going into the very depth of the heart we have these issues that we go through in life we don't get along with people maybe we don't have the guts to come out and say it openly to them maybe we don't have that courage or we don't have that akhlaq i should say that we come out openly and tell them our issues but we are just waiting for that moment isn't it that let something bad happen to him and i'll feel happy this is one of the most ugly and very much criticized qualities in islam to rejoice at the other person's misfortunes so here we have the word wala yashmatu amir al mu'minin says he doesn't rejoice this comes from shamatat shamata or shamatat is basically when you have enmity with someone someone is your enemy you don't like him he doesn't like you something bad happens to him and you feel happy this is very very much frowned upon in islam of course there are times for the sake of islam to feel happy at some misfortune for example if i ask you right now isis was defeated did we not feel happy of course for the sake of islam certain personalities in history they die or they they get what they deserve we feel happy why because they did zulm on pon those people whom whom we love they kill people that we love they imprison people that we love so for them to die and feel some kind of torment from allah is fine that we feel rejoicing at this moment because it's for the sake of islam but not for petty personal things for petty personal things you have to stay, take a step back and you have to think hang on a second is this the time of revenge to rub salt in the wound to make things even worse for the person or is it a time to you know be a bit calm considerate compassionate at least in the heart the very least of this is maybe you don't have access to that person you can't phone them you can't write to them you can't go to their house for example at least in the heart we should feel a degree of compassion this is when it is something to do with our personal situations personal issues otherwise for islam of course we have al hubb wal bughz lillah to love and to hate for the sake of god to love and to hate in the matters of religion this is fine a muttaqi person will not descend into this area he will not start to rejoice when others are suffering now why is this so important what happens as a result this is very interesting we have a hadith from imam, imam jafar as-sadiq alayhi salam do not rejoice at the misfortune of your brother lest what happens what will happen imam explains by you rejoicing two things are possible number one allah may envelop him with his mercy by you rejoicing at his misfortune allah may actually subject him to more mercy and he will inflict you afflict you with the same misfortune that he was going through in this world we don't have anything as luck or fortune or fluke nothing happens by luck or by fluke every single thing in this universe is following the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every atom every neutron every electron every zarra every smallest particle you can think of to the largest thing you can think of is following the plan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we human beings do bad things or wrong things or allah needs to awaken us somehow or punish us somehow he sends us challenges and difficulties someone dies someone gets ill someone gets a disease people are afflicted by poverty people are afflicted by other issues these are all done according to the plan of allah and the system of allah why does one get it and one doesn't why does one get it in early age one gets it in later age why does one suffer from illness and the other suffers from poverty for example this is all in the wisdom of allah 
But a part of that wisdom of Allah is our own behavior, our own actions, our own shortcomings, our own sins, the way we treat others, the way we react to, to certain events. This is all within the grand plan and scheme of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As hadith says, kama tudinu tudanu. The way you act, you will be treated. What you do, I'm putting it into my words now. What you do will come back to you. What goes around comes around. All of these are approximate ways of saying the same thing. Most of the time for mu'mineen inshallah, we get it in this world. And that is a good thing because we definitely don't want to get it in the hereafter where the justice of Allah is extremely powerful. Of course, here it is also powerful, but here because of the world's nature, the true justice of Allah cannot be dispensed here as such. We will see the true justice of Allah in the next, in the, in the next world. But some aspects of it you will see here. And when you get it in the hereafter, you know what will be said to you? هَذِهِ أَعْمَالُكُمْ رُدَّتْ إِلَيْكُمْ This is nothing other than your actions being turned back towards you. These are nothing, these consequences, this fire, this punishment, this squeezing of the grave, the angels, the way they are treating you, whatever you are doing, this is nothing other than هَذِهِ أَعْمَالُكُمْ رُدَّتْ إِلَيْكُمْ One of the ulama narrates that we were sitting somewhere in a restaurant and we were ordering food, we ordered, there were a few of us, we ordered for ourselves and we had another man, we didn't know him, he was nearby and he ordered food for himself. We barely finished our portions. He was ordering one after the other, after the other, after the other. We said, mashallah, we can't finish one, this guy is on his fifth. What's going on? And he was ravenous, he was really consuming very, very speedily. So they said, you know what, let's ask this guy what's going on. So we spoke to him and we said to him, brother, we are barely finishing one portion, you have reached your fifth portion. What is happening? He goes, let me tell you. He goes, on one night, I had some bread, naan, I had some bread. And I had eaten to my full, like I couldn't eat anymore. I had like three quarters of the naan and one quarter was left. And then a dog appeared. That dog, it sensed, this is his, these are his words, it sensed that, okay, this naan is now spare. He's not eating it. And the dog started to make a noise and started to gesture as if it wants this naan. I took the naan and I threw it into a nearby gutter. The dog went to the gutter. It was so hungry. The dog went to the gutter and tried to retrieve. But how can it reach? It doesn't have hands, fingers, so it tries with his paws, it tries with his mouth. It cannot reach it for some reason. And it failed to take that naan. And it remained hungry. And the painful noise which that dog made, it made such a horrible, painful noise because it realized it had to remain hungry. Since that moment, no matter what I eat, I do not get full and I don't enjoy my food anymore. A dog that we would not even think twice about. We have to take a lot of responsibility. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy to Think, what have I done? Why is this happening? Those who are very spiritually inclined, they have this skill. They're able to pinpoint. There's a whole discussion within spirituality of qabz and bast. The qabz of the soul, the restriction of the soul. Why sometimes, for example, you are completely behal. You don't have any energy, you're low, you feel bad, you don't feel motivated. You don't feel like reciting Quran, you don't feel like reciting namaz e shab your ibadat goes down, you feel down, you feel grumpy, you feel miserable. Why? We don't know what's happening. Sometimes your bahal, 
so much. You have energy, you have shok, you have ibadat no shok, tawfiq opens up, new things happen, you are productive, you do things, you're happy. Why? You don't know. This can all come down to this principle of qabz and bust of the soul. The closing and opening of the soul. I don't want to go into that right now. It's a very, very deep topic as such, so we won't touch that right now. But kama tu dinu tu dano. What you do, you will get. Very difficult to pinpoint. But as you become more and more spiritually cleansed, you can maybe start to pinpoint. Ah, this happened, therefore I feel like this. That happened, therefore I feel like this. This is a skill in itself. So such a pious person, a muttaqi person, will not want to go into revenge will not want to wish bad for someone.